definitely has the familiarity with the Bon Bon, is really able to get those accurate chain bombs there. And in this match, actually doesn't have to deal with uh, as many harassing characters as previous matches. You know, the forward there in the last match really allowed the first kiter to transition, but that's not going to come into play this match. So Moru doesn't have to worry about bringing excitement either, or, uh, you know, getting stunned out of the chase or the uh, chairing animations there or the camping there. So that does widen his possibilities a little bit as well. But you know, this is a big map for Bob on to cross. So I wonder if Moro will consider bringing that teleport out once again, or we've also seen Blink in the past as well to hasten the chase here. So a couple different options in play. We're going to see the spawn picks now. Uh, we're going to see everyone spread out in a nice way. Everyone's kind of locking in their spawns. We're going to see them create a, an interesting shape here. You know, you want to send them to those buildings. You want to get everyone out of the way. Moro's going to lock on here uh, in between the mercenary and the toy merchant, which is very, very interesting. Um, probably going to work out very well. It chooses not to go for that acrobat or postman, which is very interesting on the side of Moro, who seems to be putting the mad and the penguins in mad penguins. Definitely true there, Veronica. Um, so we will see who Maru decides to target as the first uh, survivor there. If he'll decide to make that trek over to the other corner to target some of those survivors that might be more ideal for a first chase, or if he'll go for the first target in vicinity. Although if he does bring teleport again, it could be an option to, uh, you know, always switch there uh, as well. And this is our third round, just the start of it, uh, for our first matchup today. I'm Veronica Leachy, you know, just another rehash. And we see, just to start off, one of those really good catapult spots that forces the hunter to walk more than they probably want to. And Moru's going to come in this area and chase after this toy merchant, who then utilizes this this catapult here, or not the catapult, the wings here, the glider, to be able to get further away. Uh, going to try and loop around this area here, which is very beneficial for the toy merchant. But got to be careful, because those skills are on cooldown, and you got that one catapult to use. Yep, and Toy Merchant here dropping this pallet that the Bonbon bon has no choice to break here. So far hasn't been bombed yet, but ha does have to watch out a little bit with these narrow corridors. Uh, utilizing the two-story really to her advantage here um, to avoid those bomb hits as well. But we do see the teleport coming in here from Moru, uh, who is immediately switching targets to the postman here. The dog, oh, oh, a flywheel coming into play right after the dog wasn't able to uh, bite the hunter. And now postman vaulting away into the building, but already at half damage here for Moru to be on this chase. Um, also going to be uh, running into another survivor decoding here as well. So the survivors here do have to really watch out as they go upon this second kite here for the postman. And this shows some of the power that we see in Hunters in these tournament situations. The game sense and the, the prediction required to, and the postman goes down right away. And there's a lot of, you know, thought that goes into these sort of things. Chooses to spawn away and then teleport over to someone when they least expect it, like that postman. Could have been a split second, could have been chosen from the beginning. You know, a lot going on and Moru is just doing these excellent, you know, place that are just using all of all of the brain power required to play them uh, and that cipher is almost finished and forced off of it in order to probably come in for this rescue soon hopefully to get this postman off chair you know a lot of time was bought in the beginning from that toy merchant and then the teleport over to the postman um so now we know what more is carrying you know just to be sure and safe uh don't have to worry about a blink or anything so going to dance around these bombs and make sure that they don't take any chip damage right away Luigi. <gasps> Oh my god! We're gonna see a terror shock on the mercenary there! And no rescue is able to be done! Oh wow, so Moru there, you know, we've really praised their ability with the bomb so far, but this is just another level. Being able to stuff a first rescue on a mercenary, no less, is so impressive. And we did see that Acrobat actually got chipped earlier um, with a really far bomb throw that the that uh, Moru made right before chairing the uh, postman there. So now we have the toy merchant coming in here for backup rescue, but also a really dangerous situation here, was able to pull it off and uh, allow the mercenary actually to activate the tie turner. So uh, at least was able to activate tie turner and allow postman to get away with that uh, on that last effort. But unfortunately they were, uh, you know, survivors took a lot of damage here in that whole process. Mercenary used up his self-heal, is at half health, and the other two survivors are chipped. So this could potentially make things difficult, slow down Cyphers a little bit, and make things difficult for uh, when they rescue in the future. But we do see, Veronica, there are two Cyphers remaining, so it's not over yet for the survivors either. 
getting utilized that teleport in order to get across the map. You know, the survivors weren't in the vicinity before, but they're in the vicinity now. Moru is going to chase over and figure out exactly where they are, you know, wants to not allow them to chase and be free and, you know, decode and heal, and you want to prevent all of those things to secure that draw and then bring it up to a win. So chasing the mercenary here across this across this bridge, and the terror shock already gotten, so I'm sure Mori was very confident in being able to get this mercenary down. Getting those bombs, you know, missing the remote bomb there, but now that the mercenary is at a 75% health, uh, a full body hit will take the mercenary down right away, Lychee. Yes. Oh, another elbow pad coming into play here. So we saw he used one to avoid that bomb earlier and one to avoid that basic hit, but Moru coming in here with another chip in the end. So Mercenary is going to fall once that time is over. We do see that he unfortunately went down pretty close to the Toy Merchant Cypher, and the Toy Merchant there had a catapult, but uh, had to pick that up. And oh, coming in here with a pallet stun here now while the bonbon bon closes in. So a little bit dangerous situation here. Moru knows the Mercenary has no self heal and decides to just go for the toy merchant and switch targets here and try to down the toy merchant instead so uh oh but is forced to uh change back to the mercenary here since the toy merchant flew off so luckily toy merchant was able to get away for the survivors and the hunt uh the survivors were also able to heal the mercenary up to at least half health and buy a little bit more time for now my goodness! Yeah, that catapult play was just so fascinating to watch, you know, avoids that remote bomb, which was impressive in itself because of how accurate Moru is, as we've discussed before. And not only that, but places the catapult down in order to get away. Um, back chasing this mercenary again, you know, gotta do your best, gotta chase this mercenary, you know, takes, him, takes a while to get down. But again, these accurate bombs might be able to quicken that process, as we can see here. And the mercenary will go down again. And another teleport on the side of Moru in order to continue pressuring these ciphers. Right, and now really uh, catching the acrobat off guard here, who goes down next to the cipher that's being decoded, which isn't the best situation for the survivors there. We do see that they um, may potentially be trying to work on another cipher after they finish up this heal, but the mercenary is a slow healer, and without self-heal, has no choice but to uh, have the toy merchant heal him up. And once they're done, probably will be healing up the toy merchant as well, since she is definitely in uh, no state to be rescuing or decoding here. So uh, unfortunately, not a whole lot of options to come in for a rescue, but we do see actually Toy Merchant there going in for the decoding instead. And Mercenary here is actually coming in a little bit closer, but without any elbow, or no, with one elbow pad left, actually, we'll see if he decides to try to make this rescue or not, and is actually closing in to rescue the Acrobat here um, as Toy Merchant primes the cipher. This is cutting it a little bit close, but I think uh, Mercenary was able to pull this off. No tie turner here. Flywheel being used by the acrobat here to just gain a little bit of distance and avoid getting down immediately. So let's see how much time this acrobat can buy out here, Veronica. We want this acrobat to buy as much time as possible to get that cipher prime, but unfortunately, with the, one of those accurate remote bombs, this acrobat happens to go down and is going to be placed back on the chair. But these ciphers are being worked on. Hopefully, one can be popped, you know, just in time for everyone to be able to get away and be safe for the time being. Uh, you want to you wanna be able to be safe from Moria. You want to make sure that he's not in your vicinity. And that does happen. The pop is done in the in the cherry animation. Is able to continue, you know, chasing this mercenary down, but, you know, got to get one of those bomb hits first in order to negate the mercenary slow damage taking. Right, and we do see that the survivors right now, both of them are still running around the map, nobody quite at the gate yet. Meanwhile, this Bonbon does have detention and also has teleport up, so should he be able to catch up this mercenary and uh, deal at least one detention hit damage, he may still have a chance to teleport. But we do see there's a catapult nearby here, which may present a situation for the mercenary to get away and transition. We'll see if he's able to do that here, but no! Bonbon here, coming in with a basic attack, downs the mercenary and decides to go for that teleport to the gate, unfortunately didn't quite get there soon enough the toy merchant was able to escape but uh we see that moru every time is unafraid to make that teleport to that gate and really try to go for that last survivor and gain that advantage for his team but in this case you know toy merchant is out of the gate mercenary has no self heal left probably another reason why moru felt comfortable making that teleport to the gate knowing that mercenary had no self heal left but in this case all he has to do is go back pick up the mercenary and they uh this is going to be a three survivor elimination for moru's bonbon here veronica 
Like crawling away maybe to just buy that time or see if that struggle could be gotten, but unluckily there is a Rocketeer right there. Uh, excellent game on both sides. Good game to Mario, good game to the survivors on the side of Comeback Leechy. Just absolutely wonderful to watch. We're going to get into the stats here. We're going to see how long everyone kited. We're going to see how many rescues. We're going to see the decoding. Always fun to see. Uh, 135 kite from 72S here. Yes, the mercenary there um, ends up having to do a bulk of the kite, although we did see it actually uh, other survivors did pull their weight there as well, whether it's for kiting, decoding, or rescuing. I think, you know, the survivors did manage to pull themselves away from a, a difficult situation where the mercenary was unable to make that first rescue actually got stuck anywhere but those three survivors being right there is going to be great you know could probably just like even do a quick round around and start hitting people with those spikes uh we're gonna start off really soon and very excited again to be with you guys chat show your support show your love get excited we're gonna go right into wheel farm i'm veronica this is Legion. this is the end of mad penguins versus comeback for today we have just begun currently going in and going right towards that i believe that's an acrobat <laughs> um but you know, going around looking to, to find more. That hiding is working. Hiding against a wheel can be very effective, Leechy, as we are seeing right now. Yes, indeed. And Gajay is just on the prowl here, driving around this two-story area, looking for the survivor, but unable to do so. Uh, really impressive job by the acrobat to... Uh, use that hiding <laughs> to just buy as much time as possible. And we see Gajay there still actually rolling around looking for a suitable target. We see that, we saw there earlier, the traits that they brought were insolence as well as trump card. So no detention for Gajay here. He is going to have to try to get a early down and utilize the camping and just the map pressure and cipher control to try to get as many survivors eliminated before endgame as he can since he does not have detention. Does have blink though, so this could uh, speed up his chase a little bit. But we do see here now running into the female dancer who already has these music boxes set up these boxes are going to come into play right away the dancer has pre-set them up preparing for gajay to come all the way over couldn't find that acrobat earlier that hiding spot worked really well for the acrobat as gajay could not find him whatsoever so anomaly will now be taking the kite with the female dancer you know gonna throw one of those traps it happens to miss but that is not all that blink comes into play and a immediate down you know just a good hit on the side of gajay took a minute to find them but as soon as he did just picking everything up anomaly will now be placed on her first rocket chair as the dancer Yes, so although the breaking wheel took quite a while to find a target here, uh, was able to capitalize on the female dancer relatively quickly and get her in the chair. So with that, we do see that Shuni's mercenary is coming nearby, possibly just to activate Tinnitus or might be positioning himself in place for a rescue. But actually here, uh, LC, the prospector also coming in. So this is what we've been talking about, Veronica, is the prospector potentially coming in here to support a rebound kite for the female dancer. Prospector can be very, very good and a partner kite, but unfortunately, Gajay is able to get right back into that wheel for him to start applying that pressure and those spikes again, and there is not much that a Prospector can do in this situation, but the Dancer can continue to run around, and because that vaulting spot has not been broken yet, um, Gajay is forced to go all the way around, and the Dancer is able to use it once more, uh, forcing Gajay to again continue to loop around this area, but it should be broken soon. Going into this corner area here, uh, just to buy more time, you know, trying to get in spots where the wheel can't perfectly reach. Now it crumbles and Anomaly has to, you know, pick up the pace and a uh, beautiful spin and a stun from the Prospector just like that support for those rebound kites, Leechy. Yeah, really impressive there. It takes a lot of coordination coordination from the survivor side to pull that off just because you have to have the Prospector come in right when the braking wheel is changing forms and not too early because, you know, it's not going to do anything about uh, truth to the wheel when the wheel is in the wheel form. But now just... Closing in on Anomaly here, who does have two spikes on them right now. Um, Breaking Wheel is going to take that basic attack, though. Finally at full presence, which is what makes the wheel super strong. Uh, and now Prospector here, though, is c uh, setting himself up to potentially stun, but unfortunately was not able to get close enough before the female dancer goes on chair. So we do have the female dancer back on the chair, her, her second chair now. Survivors um, on their side here... Let's see, they don't have any more tie turners left. So this prospector is going to have to try to do his best to protect the female dancer to give her that room to kite, but already has three stacks of spikes. So we see the acrobat is actually the one who is going to come in to do the actual rescue Ooh. here. 
beautiful stun from the Prospector, really long stun, you know, just through that magnet, and some more support from the Acrobat, but Godshay goes right back into the wheel form, you know, you don't want to deal with any of that, you don't want to deal with the Prospector stuns, you don't want to deal with the Acrobat bombs, you want to focus on this Dancer. Anomaly will likely be going down again if Godshay continues with this very, you know, harsh kiting and just, like, really putting that pressure on. I'm going to follow in Chase after and uses the Snap in order to get that down, but another beautiful long stun and a Cypher Pop after that beautiful long stun from the Prospector. There are four survivors up at endgame bleachy and gotcha is back in the wheel form trying to get an anomaly down and he is going to have to get anomaly down as soon as possible uh does have a blink here to aid in his down but uh also trump card so if he can down anomaly without using that blink has the potential to switch to teleport or or utilize that blink to down another survivor we do know that he uh mp only needs to get two survivors out in order to get a win in this game so this really puts the end game pressure on to gajay right now does have the female dancer down but we see the gate is already open and the prospector there tried to go in for a stun but the magnet was too far uh, pulled too far away so we will see a female dancer going on the chair there but on mp side um the last survivor there is a very far away and already making his way out the gate so it looks like this is actually going to be a three survivor uh escape here from mp side and i believe this means that they are the winner of today's matchup veronica a wonderful congratulations to both teams.